Hi, this is Rabbi Chaim Kaufman. Welcome to our 309th installment in the Torah Portion of the Week. We're, <laughs> we are holding my parshas by Egash and Parshas Vigash are all about Yosef telling the brothers that, you know, he's Yosef, he has my father still alive, and Yaakov coming down, and the entire Jewish people coming down um, to Egypt, uh, and all that. So, so the Torah says, uh, Book of Leviticus, chapter 45, verse 13. Torah says, Therefore, tell my father all my glory in Egypt, and all that you saw, but you must hurry, bring my father, bring my father down. So here, so here, what's the issue? Right? The issue is that he wants to tell his father, or tell the brothers, that Tell, tell our father all the glory. Right? Tell him about all the glory you know that I have here in Egypt. It says, My Rebbe, a Rabbi Rode, Moshe, Rabbi Shalita, should be well. Uh, he brings down Chokhmah Vedas, commentary on Chumash. And he asks the following question Why would Yaakov think so great? Yeah, that Yosef has all this power, and the non Jews are honoring him. Give us all this honor, all this glory. Right? Well, you know, what's he going to be impressed by? He's got money, he's got power, he's got fame. Right? Yaakov Avino was all about spirituality. All about drawing close to God. Who cares? He's got power. He's the head of a country. Right? Why is that going to make an imprint? Why is he going to tell him that? What was his intention? There, my Rebbe says, his intention was, even though he's like the king, he's second in charge. He didn't leave the Torah. He didn't leave the teachings of his father. So, so not only that, I mean, that in and of itself is a lot to say. In fact, he was in a place where it was totally immoral, right? And everything else going on in Egypt. He stayed the same. Right? He held the core values. Core values, the Torah, of mitzvahs, the values of his father's hours. Remember, he also brings down person in their lifetime, go through a lot of difficulty, a lot of issues. Sometimes to have the the um the test of, of poverty. Sometimes the taste of the the, <laughs> the test of wealth. But what does the Yosef say? Yosef tells his father that he overcame both. He had poverty. Right? He had the test of poverty. And he passed. He had the test of wealth. And he also passed. Right? He's king of, he's basically in charge of Egypt. But see, what's the most important thing here? Yaakov's not going to be impressed by that. That we understand. So Yosef's telling him, even though I got this power and I got this position, everything else, I didn't leave your path. I didn't leave the path he taught me. I didn't leave the path of my forefathers. Miracle in of itself. Put someone in, you know, middle of Sin City. How clean are they going to stay? How is that possible to stay clean? Have your mind clean, whatever. You got to stick the Torah. You got to work very hard. So he's telling them not to impress them. They're certainly not going to be impressed. Why is he telling them? Tell him he stayed the same. To tell them that he kept the values of his father. Right? And his grandfather. Then Miami brings down Warren Brooklyn's 32A. Moshe Rabbeinu makes a claim against God. What's the claim? God gave the Jewish people great wealth. Jewish people come out of Egypt with great wealth. And because of that, they made the golden calf. 
right? They made the golden calf. So the Rebbe here says they had the they have the test of, of poverty. They have the test of wealth. Test the poverty. They're in Egypt. They're a slave. They have no money. They have nothing. You know, they're suffering tremendously. But after they come out of Egypt, what do they have? They have great wealth. Right? They have great wealth. There's a tiny. He's got a claim. He says to God, listen, you gave them great wealth. That's what it says in the Torah. You're going to give them great wealth. Okay. What will the great wealth cause? They'll forget about you. That says in the book of Deuteronomy. Wealth, what does it do? Make someone lazy, potentially. You know, any wealthy people need God in general? Right? Any seriously wealthy Bali Chuba? Converts? Someone's got money, they ain't coming to religion, usually. You know, they're not changing their lives because they're missing something. They have everything. So it's a huge test. Not only that, Jewish people failed the test over here. To the extent where God says, if I dwell, if I dwell amongst the Jewish people, they'll be destroyed. Moshe Benner has to make a compromise. Don't dwell amongst the Jewish people. Otherwise, Jewish people will be totally destroyed. But the compromise was, you'll meet all punishments against the Jewish people in every generation but the sin of the golden calf. But Moshe Rabbeinu, you got to be someone like Moshe Rabbeinu make such a claim. That God himself caused it. He gave them great wealth. They failed. They absolutely failed the test. So wherever he says, the last generation, when tens of thousands of millions of Jews were killed, when they were killed by the Holocaust, at the end of the war, he had the merit to see a going to Tzadik or Mordechai Pogromans a blessed memory. Survived the war miraculously a number of times. Mordechai Pogromans was known as a Tel Zayuli. Genius. Total genius. In Torah. So Mordechai Pogromans told my Rebbe like this. Now towards the end of the war was really after the war. So it's after the war, he tells him, now the, the trial is going to start well. Jewish people in Europe, they're starving. Right? They suffer tremendously from poverty. Now they're going to have, <laughs> now they're going to have the trial of wealth. Because you're going to see tens of thousands of Jews that are multi-millionaires, billionaires, that's going to be the test the last generation. Yeah. Why is it such a test? Because again, the person has wealth. What are they going to do with it? They're going to keep it for themselves? Waste it on cars, expensive vacations, different things? Or are they going to give it to help others? Help others in need. It's also a test. But he says that's going to be the final test before coming to the Messiah. This is what more Mordechai Pogromansky blessed memory said. They already have the test of poverty. Right after the war, he says, they're going to have the test of wealth, of great wealth. You remember where wealth comes from. Person gonna say, I did this and I did that. They forget the big X factor. The big X factor, God Himself. But well, it's also a test. Tremendous test. Person could, let's say, any given day of all these people, you know, come to the door. 
you know, for this institution, that institution, this situation, that situation. Person has give, give willingly. Because if you don't give, you push people aside or whatever, you could lose it. Why'd God give you the money? He gave it to you to help others. He wants you to help others. The poverty is a big test. The people say, yeah, I'd like to have the test. I'd love to have that test. Not an easy test. Yeah, you see people win the lottery. Overnight, become millionaires. Their lives are ruined. Statistically, it shows their lives are totally ruined. And they end up with no money in the end. Wealth doesn't make you happy. That, there's no question. Helps. <laughs> Having money helps. You're right. Remember, everyone would say, money's not everything. But it's always good to have in your pocket. But well, it's not everything. But you have to how to use it. If God gave you money, it's supposed to help others. It's supposed to give charity. Give a tenth or up to a twenty or up to, up to um you can give 10% or uh, you can give up to 20%. But you don't have to know you have to know where to give it. You have to give it the proper charity. Jewish schools, rabbinic scholars, needy brides, a lot of good causes. But you have to know, you have to use it well. You have to use it for the right thing. We're getting to also with that. You got plenty of money. You want this, you want that, other things. You know, you got to live in this world. But we always say you have to, have, you have to know how to navigate this world. Not easy to navigate this world. person can say, I made money. I worked hard. Why should I have someone else? Let them work hard. I worked hard. I had the odds of the Shmaya. Right? I had heavenly help over here. They probably won't admit it. But let's say, but let them work hard. I should help somebody else. Someone who's struggling. Why don't I do that? Let them help themselves. There, here's a few bucks. That'll get you killed. Because God says, I gave you this money. I helped you out. I made your business successful. This is how you thank me. You don't help on others. And remember one thing. The help goes first to family. Right? Goes to family first. But it goes to your people. Jews should help Jews first. But the non Jews worry about the non Jews. You're going to say it's so selfish. Is that not true? Plenty of countries, they're looking out for their own first. They're not looking to help others. They may help out others, this and that. But they're not helping out others first. The ones that are going to help out are their own. So you say the same thing. Person to Jew, you should help out Jews. <coughs> Person to JIT, a Jew in training. <coughs> should also help out Jews. Right? Or non-Jews can also help out Jews. But we help out our own first. But you have to know where to give it. You know, and if you give it to the wrong place, you're in trouble. You're in serious trouble. But it's a test. Because people know you have money. And let's say, you know, you were charitable. Come, you know, come Sunday, you want to spend time with family, this and that. You have 20 people knocking at your door all day long. So, you know, if you were smart, you'd have hours. You have certain hours during the week. People want to come. You're going to hear the story. You're going to get the money. Very good. But always give with a happy face. Even if you can't give that much, give with a happy face. Because if you give with a sad face, it's in the air. Thank, goodbye. You don't get credit for that. You don't even get a C minus. You get no credit. So if you have a give it with a smile, you don't want to be on the other side. You do not want to be on the receiving end. 
Anyone who's been there knows. Listen, it's also a test if you don't have very much to thank God for. What do you have? It's also a test. But again, as we always say, you got to see the bigger picture. Whatever God gives me, takes care of my needs. You got a roof over your head, even if it doesn't belong to you. You have food, you're not starving. A million things to be thankful for, but that's not the point. The point is, if you have, give. <laughs> if you have the ability to help others, help them. And if you can, you give whatever you can. And if you can't give anything, give them good words, words of encouragement. But it's a test. Both sides are a test. You know, but, if, you know, keep in mind, if God gave you and you have abundance, your obligation is to help others. That's your obligation. Now, let me give everything away. You got to have some for yourself. Otherwise, you may have to come on to other people to help you. You know, but if you have, Give as much as you can. You give with a smile because you never want to be on the other side. It's a test. Right? It's a big test. Because the more we have, the more we want. That's the problem. The person has to know how to find the balance. All right? Finding the balance is not so easy, but you have to remember one thing. God gave it to you. God helped you over here. So because of that, you have an obligation to help others. I remind everyone I have a class on Duties of Heart every Tuesday, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Two Q&As, Tuesday and Thursday, 10 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Israel Time. Ethics for Our Fathers every Saturday, um, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, 9 o'clock uh, at night, Israel Time. Um, Book of Leviticus, chapter 17, Sunday, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, 4 o'clock Israel Time. Uh, conversion class, I have those during the week as well. Anyone has any questions on any of this, find me on Facebook at Michael Time Kaufman. Beyond Orthodox Conversion to Judaism, OrthodoxConversion.com, or Beyond Orthodox Conversion to Judaism on YouTube. There I got videos on the Torah portion of the week, Ethics for Our Fathers, Q&As, uh, Controversial Issues, Book of Leviticus, and anyone want, want to send me an email, Rabbi Chaim Kaufman at gmail.com, R-B-B-I-C-H-A-I-M-C-O-F-F-M-A-N at gmail.com.